for the first time, a school shooter's parent is convicted for the actions of her son and her own. Jennifer Crumbly found guilty of all four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman. This is my third consecutive video on the Jennifer Crumbly case, and it's an exultant one because... I was hoping for a guilty verdict in this case, and the jury did justice. I thought the prosecutors did an excellent job, and I thought that this case could have gone either way because it was so emotionally charged. You saw the issues on both sides. You had people saying this is about parental responsibility, as I did. You had others saying, well, we don't want to set a precedent that makes all parents criminally responsible for the actions of their wayward kids. Although I would submit this is an unusual case. This is a case of egregious facts you will unlikely see anywhere else and hopefully never again. Then there was the issue of guns. And you had people say this is uh, an example of holding someone accountable for just leaving their guns out, not taking basic precautions, while others said, hey, you need to protect Second Amendment rights. But there were gun owners on this jury, hunters and people who took... Uh, gun ownership seriously and responsibly and were probably aghast at the way that the Crumbleys handled their gun, allowing their troubled 15-year-old to get access to it, not to mention the fact that they bought him the gun. Instead of a mental health counselor, a therapist, they bought him a gun. But as a prosecutor, I want to give you three reasons why I think the jury ruled the way they did. Three key moments for prosecutors. Now, there are a lot of reasons why uh, they decided, and we won't know until the jurors come out publicly and speak to what was going on, if they ever do, in the jury room. But I can give you three important parts of the trial from my perspective. Number one, the prosecutors put forth an image of the gun lock. The gun lock that was still seemingly in the same case it came in, where it was untouched, unused. And this contradicted what Jennifer Crumbly said on the stand. That, oh, no, we locked the gun up. And even though she gave the responsibility to her husband, it showed, number one, that they didn't lock up the gun. After all, how did Ethan Crumbly get a hold of it? And number two, that she was lying on the stand about it. So I think that was important, especially with this jury. Number two, I thought that Jennifer Crumbly's testimony, although... It seemed to go okay for her for a while. I thought she really stepped in it when she said that she wouldn't have done anything differently. Do you believe there were things you were thinking at the time, I should do this, but I'm not doing it? Do you look back and think that? No, I don't. I mean, I of course I look back after this all happened and um, I've asked myself if I would have done anything differently and I wouldn't have. This was an answer to a question given by her own lawyer, mind you. This was direct examination. This was not during cross-examination. So she was prepared for all the questions. She had prepared answers, but this one uh, was not a good one because you had all those grieving families in the courtroom and you had jurors, people from the community. This is a traumatic event in the community. And here she is saying that there's nothing that she would do differently. Come on, where's your humanity? That was a cold and cruel answer. And although I understand that she and her lawyer probably thought if you admit that you could have done something differently, it could hurt you legally, but a big thing for jurors is to determine whether the person at the, uh, on the stand is likable, whether the defendant is likable. And here, she didn't come across likable with that answer. And third, and finally, there was, to me, the smoking gun, which was the drawing that Ethan Crumbly made at school that showed an image of shooting up a school. Blood everywhere. The thoughts won't stop. Help me. The image of a gun. This was um, a roadmap to what was going to happen. And Jennifer Crumbly and her husband were shown it. They didn't think to tell the school that they had gotten their son a gun, that he had access to a gun. They didn't think to ask if they could check the book bag. They didn't seem to care whether their son stayed at school. In fact, they refused to take him home. So all that combined to me 
meant a guilty verdict. And Jennifer Crumbly could say, well, I was in the dark. I, I didn't know about any of these things. But yeah, she knew when she saw that drawing that a tragedy could ensue. And yes, some people out there will say, well, the school district also didn't act. Yeah, they didn't, but they didn't know that Ethan Crumbly had access to a gun. Jennifer Crumbly knew that because she and her husband bought him the gun. So hopefully this will make some parents in a similar situation think twice, but I'm not willing to say this is going to create as much of a precedent as other people think because I think this was an unusually uh, awful set of facts with unusually awful parents. And hopefully... Uh, we won't see this kind of tragedy again, but if we do with a similar set of facts, then yeah, then it's game on for similar prosecutions. So that's my postmortem of the verdict. Yeah, I was pleased with it. I think justice was done. And now the next trial in a month will be of Jennifer's hu- husband, Mr. Crumbly, who for his sake perhaps should take a plea deal, but we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, State Attorney for Palm Beach County a.k.a. the Florida Lawman. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.